music. It lifts our spirits. It soothes our pain. It brings us together. It's really nice to see everything opening up and, and having the big crowd again. Music does all of that. And for 125 years, this beautiful thing has resonated from this ever-changing, never-wavering collective of musicians. The Oregon Symphony. On this September day, thousands pack Waterfront Park for a free concert, one of many the symphony performs each year. For some in the audience, it's their first time hearing live classical music. Perhaps no one on stage loves that more than music director David Donsmeyer. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoy your evening. Thanks so much for being here. And the crowd, love you, love you. they love him too. Often people ask me, oh, you know, what do we need to know about classical music to go to a concert? And it's, it's kind of like nearly apprehensive. And I'm like, you don't need to know anything about music. You just need to come and you need to enjoy yourself. That's true. Whether it's a classical concert, something from the pop series, a children's program, or watching Return of the Jedi as the symphony plays the score. And the dress code. This is the way. You get the idea. It definitely makes it accessible because it's, you know, it, it connects us with memories from our past and connects us with things that we enjoy. We're incredibly lucky to have Oregon Symphony right here. That's what you want. You want people to come to the concert and, and feel positive and feel good about it, right? You know, and enjoy what they're doing. Dansmeyer is just the third music director to lead the symphony in the past four decades. Last year, Carlos Calmar passed him the baton after 18 memorable seasons. And then there was James DePriest. Kind of says it all, James DePriest, much more than our maestro. DePriest enriched audiences for 23 seasons, more than any other director. He moved the symphony to the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall, and it was under DePriest's leadership that the symphony served the community in a way no one could have imagined. Associate Concertmaster Peter Fajola remembers September 11th, 2001. We were rehearsing right here in the Schnitzer that day. We got the news, DePriest stopped everything, we decided that we would need to play a special concert. Three days later, community members lined up for the free concert, hoping for tickets and healing. I think we're all very, very heartbroken and want to see something uh, of us all coming together in support. They even broadcasted live out into the park blocks right here. It was a bit surreal, it was a, very sad, but it was an important thing that we were doing. In everything that we do, I want us to make a difference in people's lives. For Symphony President and CEO Scott Showalter, that means bringing music to people in new and different ways, whether it's while tackling social issues. To make audiences not just entertained, but to think or reaching them on a broader scale. This season, the symphony will live stream six concerts. They'll play in neighborhoods and teach. It all means so much more after the 18 months they paused for COVID. Since 1896, it was the only time, save for World War II, that the music stopped. And so when we returned to the stage in the fall of 21, the response was euphoric. We thanked the audience. Um, for sticking with us. With the, uh, the orchestra behind me, they all stood and we, we thanked them and then it got emotional going both ways. It's in that spirit of gratitude that the Oregon Historical Society recognizes the Oregon Symphony as an Oregon history maker. I just feel really honored that they are honoring us. Here's to 125 more years of the joy, healing, and unity. We as humans need music. We can't live without. We're proud to be here and we are really hopeful that the city is really proud to have us and so that we can continue to make history together. Mm -hmm.